when you receive a phone and the phone is not switching on for you to troubleshoot and find out the problem of that phone then solve the problem you have to open the phone right because you open the phone because you try charging the phone even for some time and the phone did not show any sign of switching on so as soon as you open the phone the first thing that you will need to check is the battery and for you to check the battery you have your multimeter you have to set your multimeter to DC range right here then set it to 200 or 20 right here so I mostly use 200 so once you have set it to 200 you have your a battery connector if it's not the battery that has a flex you can still do the same thing so place the red probe to the positive of the battery then the black to the negative so you will get between 3.7 to 3.2 to 4.2 if the battery is okay depending on the battery so this battery can charge up to 4.4 volts so right here I have between 3.9 to 4 volt you understand so if you check and you get even 3.7 volt in this battery that is okay for the phone to charge that means that the battery is okay for the phone to charge but if you check then you get any voltage less than 3.5 volt then make sure that you should boost up the battery using any battery booster that you have or a 5 volt charger but i want you to keep in mind that because the voltage right here is reading correctly it does not mean that the battery might not have some other issues the battery has the the b temp then it has the battery id you understand so if one of those pins are not functioning properly the battery won't be able to power up the phone and sometimes everything might be okay you get the voltage but the capacity of this voltage is too small or too high to power up the mobile phone so always try to test a different battery before you continue okay so if you check and you make sure that your battery is all good then the next thing that I want you to check in the mobile phone I want you to check if there is any shorting full shorting or half shorting I have talked about this in so many videos but I just want to make it more detailed in this video so for you to check that you have to set your multimeter to booster mode right here which is diode mode and when you set your multimeter right here to this mode you will hear this beep right here so when you hear this beep you have to disconnect your battery in your you have to disconnect your battery from your phone and make sure there is no uh, voltage entering your phone make sure you don't supply your phone with any voltage because what we are going to be doing right here we are going to be doing cold testing and when doing performing a cold testing in a mobile PCB the PCB does not have to have any voltage you understand so the red probe you have to set it right here I usually do this to get the correct signal because I know how to read half shotting and the full shotting using this cold testing format. So the red probe should go to the ground while you use the black probe to test the battery connector. So if I test right here you will see that normally it's connecting because this is the GND supposed to be right here. So then this is the positive of the battery connector. So you see this reading right here. So when you test, you need to take note of this reading. You're supposed to get a reading here as from 300 ohm to 1000, depending on how the phone is built. You understand? So a normal reading, you need to understand that a normal reading should be at least 300 ohm right here, which is 300 resistance right here upward. But that does not mean that a phone with less than 300 will not switch on you might check on some phones then you will have a value right here here which is 200 and something so because the value is 200 and something less than 300 does not mean that the phone wouldn't switch on I want you to understand that that is half shorting in that phone when you get a reading right here which is less than 300 you can have 200 and something which means that that phone is half shorting so you can still see a phone switching on with a reading with a with an ohm reading right here which is less than 300 so that phone will be switching on quite all right so depending on how they manufactured it depending on the 
the type of resistors in which they use in the parallel connection of the phone. But the normal reading of any phone should be from 300 upward. You understand? So if you check a phone then you have at least 250 that phone can still function without reading. But if you check then you get you get any value less than 200 like 100 and something a phone cannot switch on with that resistance but when you test the terminals then you hear a beep that means that that phone is full shorting so when you put it in the in the negative then put it in the positive then you hear a beep that means that that phone is full shorting and you will need to check the full shorting component i have a video on how you can check shorting in a mobile phone you understand i will put all the videos in the in the video description i will put all the videos in which i will mention in this video in the video description because i have a video on how you can make a homemade short killer then troubleshoot shorting then remove shorting and find out the shorting component in a mobile phone using a homemade short killer you will see the video in the video description then i have videos on how you can use the short killer as well you can find all that after watching this video in the video description so make sure you like this video just right now before you continue watching so if you check everything and you are okay like yeah everything is okay yeah there is no half shorting or full shorting that is where things really get complicated that is where you really need to get into the deep part of troubleshooting so what I want you to do next, I want you to connect the charger to your phone. And I'm going to do that right now. You have to connect the charger to, to your phone. Okay, cool. So once you have connected the charging flex, you need to set your multimeter. You don't test voltage in this range right here. You only test resistance in this range and capacitance. So you have to set your multimeter to 200 DC range right here then you will have to check the charging voltage right here so as you can see right here I have my charging voltage which is 4.2 which means that the uh, charging circuit is functioning properly so if you check then you don't get the charging voltage right here which depends on the phone some phones only give the full charging voltage when you connect the battery which is because the charging IC is being built with a MOSFET which only gets switched on when the battery is connected and it takes the switching on voltage from the battery so when you check then you get the charging voltage which means that your charging section is functioning properly you need to go to the next step but if you check and you don't get then in phones like Samsung you need to check the middle pin instead instead of the positive pin you understand because on phones like samsung and some other phones on some samsung's when you connect a charger you won't get any charging voltage in the positive but instead you will get it in the middle pin which is not the negative which is not the positive you will get it in the back on pin of the battery connector so the charging voltage in those phones only switch when you connect the battery then the charging IC will now get switched on then power up then send the voltage to the battery positive connector right here so if you try all that and it does not work you try all that to test here you don't see any voltage in the middle pin or the positive pin then what you are going to do right there you are going to follow the 5 volt from the charging port to the charging IC you have to make sure that the 5 volt which is the charging IC which in this mobile PCB let me see which in this mobile PCB you have the little charging IC right there so I'm going to check 5 volt somewhere right here okay so i have the 5 volt right here so for example if i test the battery connector and i do not get any voltage then i check right here then i get the 5 volt which means that it enters the charging ic what i'm going to do from there i'm going to change that charging ic because it seems like the charging ic has some 
is blocking vo voltage. You know that the charging IC is found in the power section of a mobile phone. So if it has some type of problem, it can stop the phone from switching on, even though it's a charging CPU. So if you change the charging IC, then check. Then now you start getting the charging voltage. That means that from there, the phone might switch on and might not switch on. So, like I said, depending on the phone. So when you, ch you change the charging IC, then check the voltage you get the voltage or you check and you don't get the voltage connect the battery to see if the phone will charge because like i said not all phones will give you the charging voltage when battery is not connected so if you do all that and it still does not work then the next thing that i will want you to do i will want you to check the power ic section so i want you to check the power ic section right here Okay, cool. I want you to check. This is the power IC of this phone. So I will want you to test. You will need to test these inductors right here to see if anyone is broken. So these are inductors, what we call coils. So you will need to set your multimeter to buzzer mode. For you to test them, you need to set your multimeter to buzzer mode. Make sure you're hearing a beep. And you need to test the inductors side by side. So the reason why you need to really, really take note of these inductors is because the inductors right here filters all the output voltage from the power IC. So these inductors are the main filter components that distribute the voltage from the uh, power IC right here. You understand? So you need to test them side by side. Right here the pins are too small and I need a needle. But you need to test them side by side to make sure that all of them are beeping but if you check and there is one who, that is not beeping then you will have to change it make sure that all of them are beeping okay so what if you check and not all of and all of them are beeping but still yet the phone does not switch on i need you to check the power button you have to connect the battery then check the power button i have to connect the battery and check the power button voltage in the power button so this is the power button connector right here and i have 3.8 which is the power on in voltage for this phone if you check then you don't see the power on in voltage in the power button or in the power button flex then what you're going to do from there you're going to change the power ic but what if you check and you get like i'm getting right here then what you will have to do is that you are going to change the ROTC of that phone which is the real time clock and the real time clock for this phone right here is this crystal also let's go right here the ROTC of this power IC so this ROTC right here is a crystal also let's go for this power IC so if you get all the voltages that you are checking like the power on in voltage and still yet the phone does not switch on then make sure that you change the ROTC with the correct number and like I said if you want to learn everything in details and learn everything in just a short time then make sure that you send me a message on WhatsApp so that you can register to my mobile repairing course and here is my WhatsApp number on the screen you can just send me a message and I will give you more information about the class so with a class you can learn everything in just a short time if you really want to learn everything about this you can just subscribe and then wait for more videos so we will end here for today so thank you and see you soon